So, guys, thank you so much for joining me on Infamous Horrors and Infamous Interviews today. So, Tony, I'll get started with you. What got you interested in directing Ted K? Uh, it was a topic, you know, that I was familiar with, just like everybody in America. Um, and, uh, you know, it was something that had more relevance after 9-11 and dealing with American terrorism. Um, but then finally reading his manifesto a few years after that and realizing that, you know, there were some ideas that were pretty relevant and were become way more relevant. And the more you dug into the story, you realized, you know, the, you know, all the nuances to the tale that had kind of been left out of sort of the simplified FBI version of events. So I just thought it would be fascinating to just jump into Ted's world and just, you know, and see, you know, what his existence was like, you know. Um, and then by using, you know, subjectivity as a way to be as actually objective as possible about, you know, the man. And Saltro, I noticed in your resume, you'd like to take a lot of chances on the characters that you portray. So what got you interested in Ted K? Because this is a really interesting character study. And I would say this is probably one of your career best performances right now as it stands. Yeah, thanks, man. I was just fascinated from the moment that I read the manifesto and when I heard him speak particularly there's only one interview available of his actual speaking voice which he did from prison and you can get that on YouTube and when I heard that I thought this is just very different from any of the other portrayals of him like I don't know why nobody's done that like this is like a high this guy has the potential for like high energy you know engaging conversation sort of slightly nerdy jokes you know, um, and, and uh, so it was kind of, and then 10,000 pages of diary that were incredibly brutally honest in terms of what he was experiencing, the loneliness, the things he yearned for, his weaknesses, his strengths, his difficulty in the beginning at just even committing any violent acts because he was brought up so well. He was so sort of well-mannered and, you know, with, with very traditional values. So just to vandalize a piece of logging equipment was a difficult thing for him to do. Um, so it was, it was just a great, great uh, opportunity to, to go into looking at human beings and human behavior, the complexity of, of what we are and the, the violence that kind of leaks, you know, sits right under the surface still for us as a society. Right. And this question is for both of you because there's a lot of great cinematography in Ted K that once you know how he really feels inside and one of the ones I picked up on was the construction site when he said specifically they keep you know going over his land to find oil and then you see that construction site all almost down to the ground's core to let you know how he feels inside he, it's like he's being ran over so when you see that on screen, on film in the final product, how does that make you guys feel like? Is that a moment where you're like, wow, that is a really great metaphor for how this guy feels inside as well? Yeah, well, for me, for me, it was, you know, he, it's, it's his, if you can imagine the fact that anyone would be violent to protect their family. That's a very easy way into this character. You know, if, if, if I say a guy comes into your house and, and he's threatening to kill your kids or something, most people are like, yeah, I can kill that person, you know, and, and everyone's fine with that, um, supposedly. You know, Ted's family was the forest and was the creatures in the forest. So as you, as you come and you start cutting that down and you start crushing it and you start turning it into roads or looking for oil or whatever, that his initial reaction was just to protect that. He wasn't out to like change the whole world in the beginning. He was just like, I'm going to protect this. I'm going to get some kind of revenge for what they're doing to my family, if you will. That's kind of how I interpreted it and how he kind of refers to it at times. Yeah. And I think, you know, these sort of small actions in a way that are just, you know, in his own backyard, you know, are just metaphorical for the, you know, the, the larger catastrophe we're facing, you know, with, uh, you know, the, the climate cliff we're about to go off of. So, you know, it's sort of one man raging in his own neighborhood, you know, his own backyard, but it really is, you know, uh, you know, it's a larger issue that, you know, is gonna involve a lot of death and carnage starting in the next decade, you know? Yeah, and you know, Tony, uh, 
true crime is like we're at the epitome of true crime in its own genre right now. So when you do a film like Dead K, how do you balance knowing that this stuff like really happened and you're not out to like humanize them per se, but just as a deep character study that Ted K was? Well, I think we wanted to, you know, just be as accurate as possible. So we were just laying out the story as is. So, you know, that was, you know, years and years of doing research uh, and just sort of putting forth, you know, the facts of, you know, of, of, of his actions mixed with, you know, the, you know, the, the spectrum of his personality that we got to know quite well from reading all his very intimate, very honest, like Charles was saying, uh, diaries that just revealed a lot about the guy, you know, and like anything just wanted to, you know, sh just show that things are sort of more complicated than, you know, you know, you first hear about with all these sort of tales and, you know, behind every you know, murderer, there is a human and how did they get there? What were they, you know, what were they thinking? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of get away from the oversimplification of these media narratives, you know, especially with true crime. Um, and wanted to get away from sort of the cliche law enforcement tropes too, that we're just so overexposed by. So we just wanted to kind of in traditional cinematic anti-hero, you know, uh, you know, the tradition of it, just dive into Ted Kaczynski and be in his world and his place and his, you know, and, and, and see what that felt like. And Saltro, this one is for you. Uh, this was a one man show in Ted K for the majority of the film. So did that like, put any more pressure for you knowing that it would be a one person. So when you're reading the script to kind of hold that tension, hold that weight on your shoulders per se, how was that like also working on Ted K? Uh, no, it didn't really put more pressure for me. I enjoy the, 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 the chance to do that, you know, to, to, to carry a, a film is, is something that I was very grateful to be able to do, to be honest. So I was quite excited by it. Uh, you know the the ultimately the pressure of of um, of film successes and failures as I've learned over the years is 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 much more on the producer and the director than the actor. You know the director really carries the can on that. So I just go into it, just give one hundred and fifty percent. You know as long as I can do the best performance I can, that's all I can offer. You know, and I I really am proud of this film and and what we were able to do. And um, yeah, I hope uh, I hope it's uh, an interesting watch for people. And one more final question from both of you. You know, we live in a day and age where premium videos on demand are the next huge big thing. But whenever you make a film like Ted K, you want it to be experienced in a theater with the crowd doing the gasp and the awes at what Saltro does, especially as Ted K. So how do you guys feel like this film is gonna be more accessible with premium videos on demand and the theatrical release? as well yeah it's uh i mean you know this is a very cinematic movie so it's a shame that you know just with covid and other things that you know it could it could you know more people could see it in the ideal way um but at the same time it's very intimate so it's kind of interesting to have it come through you know your screen at home and just sort of be with this guy and this character and this performance that just exposes it all you know and it's super raw so you know, I think, uh, you know, that's what I'm sort of excited about is that, you know, this this wild story and our sort of struggle to make this film, you know, which is sort of in a way very handmade, you know, will be open to every single person to see it sort of, uh, you know, all at the same time. It's exciting. I just I just hope with all of the streaming, I just hope that people work more on their sound systems, like just yes. generally as a filmmaker, <laughs> because you can watch it on a small screen. But don't watch it on like laptop speakers, you know, no. like that's like any movie, any movie I'm in. I'm like, at least guys, come on, you know, okay, streaming is here. Speakers are not that expensive anymore. Put some proper sound in your space if you're going to watch it at home, even if you're watching it on your damn cell phone. You know? And you know what? I appreciate you bringing that up, Saltro, because one of the first things I did when the pandemic hit was I invested in my home theater system. So I got a 75 inch QLED now versus nice. 50 inch TV that I used to have. And I have a whole Dolby Atmos set up now. There you go. And I got okay. Philips Hue lights which syncs with the TV. So whatever the TV showing, the lights will just flicker that color and it's amazing. Oh, incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, if you get the good sound, you got a chance, you know, and the screen is yeah. getting bigger. So yeah, maybe, 
maybe one day enough people have home theaters that the theater issue isn't such a big one anymore. Yeah, and that's what we're hoping with, you know, COVID. Everybody's got a booming system to watch the film. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on Infamous Horrors and Infamous Interviews, man. It's been really fun, and congratulations on Ted K. Okay. Thank Thanks you. So I like the name, Infamous Horrors. It's the most appropriate interview we've done <laughs> for Ted K. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for that, Saltro. Cheers, bro. Right, take care.